What's up fellow drivers? Today I want to talk about what it's like to own a GTR. And I want to hit on five different points of ownership. So I'm going to talk about how fast it is, uh, what it's like to drive daily, what kind of costs are associated with it, how people react to the car, and how people react to me as an owner. Alright, so how fast is it? really fast. I mean, honestly, you don't need me to tell you that, right? There are so many videos all over the internet, uh, modified cars, you know, putting down like 10s, 9s, 8s, or even in the 7 seconds for drag racing. Um, the GTR is always in like the top 3 or even winning like the runway races. Uh, you know, it can put down over 2,000 horsepower, 2,500 horsepower. Uh, it's really nutty, right? Uh, that being said, my own personal experience with how fast it is, uh, it still surprises me sometimes. Like sometimes when I really put my foot in it, it still kind of surprises me like, oh, whoa, like I almost got scared from that. Uh, I recently did my first track day with it. Uh, in fact, I still have uh, all the track tape around it with the numbers and everything. Uh, so I'm driving the race car on the streets. Um, but that experience at the track was really awesome. Um, you know, I'm a pretty inexperienced driver and uh, I have no professional instruction whatsoever as far as track driving goes. So even then, I was lapping way faster than most people out there on the track. And that's just because the car is like so crazy. And you know, on the streets doing poles, things like Corvettes, it doesn't matter, you know, twin turbo AMGs, uh, even like, you know, Ferraris, Lamborghinis of like the same uh, year as this, uh, you know, the GTR is still extremely fast. All right, so the second thing, what's it like as a daily driver? Now, technically this isn't my daily driver. Um, what I take to work every day is a Mazda 3, and I actually bought this with the intention of making it my daily driver uh, because I was going to get a much shorter commute, um, but that didn't end up happening, so um, right now I only drive this on the weekends, although once in a while I will take it to work. Um, but, you know, hey, I'm here on my way to get an alignment, I'm just cruising down the freeway, some kind of normal traffic, I'm not doing anything crazy, so this is pretty representative of uh, what it would be like as a daily driving experience, and I've driven it in all kinds of just like normal conditions. Uh, the GTR has somewhat of a negative reputation for not having a great interior. Now, when you compare it to, you know, really high-end luxury vehicles like a Mercedes S-Class or a Bentley or, you know, other supercars that are over $100,000, yes. Uh, I'm sure the interior does not really uh, stand up to those standards, uh, but this is not supposed to be a luxury vehicle, right? And you only get this incredible performance for the price that it's at, uh, you know, with some kind of sacrifices. That being said, the interior is really nice, okay? So it's definitely not cheap. You know, compared to your average car out there, it's really nice. Uh, the leather on the door, all the touch points, you know, even on the dash, it has kind of like a, a pillow top, uh, soft leather. Um, everything feels really nice. Uh, there's no weird rattles or buzzing or anything. Uh, that being said, the transmission does make noise. So you do hear the mechanical sounds when it's shifting. Uh, probably none of them are showing up on camera, but like just now I just slow down a lot and it will like shift down, shift up. You can kind of hear some clunking. Personally, I think that's kind of cool. You know, it adds a little bit more to the experience. It makes it just a little bit more raw. Um, it's not so, uh, you know, just like insulated or digital. Uh, so that's kind of cool from my perspective. Uh, otherwise, you know, um, it has a Bose sound system, which sounds really nice and clear. Also has some good bass to it. Uh, and you know, I can just stick it in automatic and if I get into heavy traffic like now, it's no big deal. Uh, that being said, when I want to drive aggressively, of course I can flip it over into manual and hammer it. Suspension is you know, somewhat stiff, but not crazy stiff. I have it in comfort right now. Most of the time when I'm driving on the street, that is what I have it in when I'm just, you know, going down city roads and that kind of thing. Uh, and then I'd say it's pretty comfortable. It's definitely 
softer than my MR2, which has TRD springs and Coney Yellow uh, when I have this in comfort. And then I would say when I have it in normal, it's probably pretty comparable to that. And then when you put it in race mode, the suspension is really, really hard. Another thing when talking about daily driving is the fact that it's actually pretty practical. So the trunk is quite large. You can fit a lot of things in there. Um, you know, you've got the passenger seat and the back seat, if say you had kids, is actually pretty usable. That being said, headroom isn't great. So, you know, if you have somebody back there that's taller than like, you know, probably 5'4 or so, um, it's probably not going to be uh, too, too comfortable. If they're really tall, they might actually have to lean forward. But overall, especially as a single guy that I am, uh, it could totally be a daily. Uh, there's really no reason why, you know, and when you're cruising down the highway, it actually gets pretty good gas mileage too. So now let's talk about what it costs to actually own one. And I don't mean like the MSRP or the used cost. I mean, you can look that up. Uh, it's not hard to figure out how much it costs to actually buy a GTR. Uh, but I mean like, what are the payments? What's the maintenance, insurance, that type of thing? So as far as payments go, if you're not paying cash, which don't pay cash. I mean, I don't care whether you're super wealthy or not, you shouldn't pay cash. You know, if you have a good credit score, uh, you can get really low interest rate and it just doesn't make sense. You can use that money for something that's gonna, uh, you know, give you more of a return. You can invest it or use it for other things. But anyway, I'm definitely not a financial advisor, so do whatever you want with your money. Uh, but uh, depending on, of course, the uh, initial price of it, whether you bought a used one or a new one and how big your down payment was, uh, your payment is going to change, of course. Uh, but generally, you can think of the payment as something that's going to be kind of like having a second uh, mortgage or rent payment every month. Uh, and it might sound kind of crazy to some, uh, and it definitely depends on where you live. Like here in California, housing's really expensive. So, you know, the car payment for the GTR is not really gonna be as much as it would cost to actually, uh, you know, rent or uh, buy a house and pay your mortgage every month. Uh, but it's going to be significant. So just think about having another big payment like a rent payment. Uh, another thing that's really pretty costly is insurance, okay? So insurance is definitely going to be expensive. Again, depends on how many miles you drive and what state you're in, how old you are, that kind of thing. Uh, but insurance compared to most cars is going to be quite high. Then you have maintenance cost. Now, I've had it for about a year and I really haven't had to do much of any maintenance on it at all yet. So uh, I am kind of talking about this from a somewhat uh, inexperienced position. Uh, the only thing that I've done on it really for maintenance so far was an oil change. And I went to the dealer just because for the first time it was still under warranty. I just decided I'd go to the dealer. Next time I'll probably just do the oil change myself. But the oil change at the dealership was about $150 or $160, something like that, which is pretty expensive for an oil change. But, you know, relative to the cost of the, you know, other things with the ownership and you know over the life of the car um, it's really a pretty minor cost uh, but it is going to be more expensive than you know taking in your other average Corolla or whatever I'm sure. Uh, brake pads are really easy to change because it does have the Brembo brakes. Uh, tires are going to be expensive of course but again that depends on what type of tires you get. Uh, you know, you can either get run flats or you can go for Toyo R888s or Pilot Super Sports or whatever, it can range. Uh, but they are 20 inch wheels. So, you know, that's gonna be expensive like any other kind of luxury vehicle. Uh, but for the most part, from all of my research and from my own personal experience, the GTR is extremely reliable. in the car and we're on our way. Uh, alignment is perfect. I want to say thank you to 714 Tires. No, they're not sponsoring me, but I've always had a great experience with them. Uh, they have good prices and fantastic service. 
Uh, definitely if you have like a custom alignment or a slammed car or uh, you know just anything that you don't want messed up really expensive wheels whatever I would highly recommend them so check out 714 tires if you're in the SoCal area anyway uh, next thing that I want to talk about as far as owning the GTR is how people react to the car so um, you know the GTR certainly has a reputation and uh, it can kind of go one of two ways like on one hand I'll like drive around super under the radar sometimes like there are definitely times when I'll go out driving and no one even pays attention to me at all uh, that being said you know some people do definitely recognize it even if they aren't a car person you know it doesn't look like a normal car um, it, it kind of has that certain appeal to it um, but it's a little more under the radar than a crazy supercar uh, now for those that do know about it people will lose their shit sometimes so um, just driving around on the freeway a lot of times I'll see people in my rearview mirror like holding up their phone like snapping a picture you know they're like oh GTR spotting uh, one time I was driving down the freeway and uh, like there were these kids in the back seat of an SUV and they were like giving me thumbs up uh, and then you know other times <laughs> people will react really crazy sometimes like once I was just kind of like driving along in bumper to bumper traffic and this guy in an Integra is in the exit lane to my right and he drives by and he like totally lost his shit when he saw it like he literally like stuck half his body out his window looked back at me and he was like holy shit a GTR so uh, yeah <laughs> you can definitely get that kind of thing sometimes also you'll get a lot of people revving at you um, like sometimes like once I was literally just like driving down the street and cars going the other direction in like a GTI or whatever started revving at me um, it's like what am I gonna like flip a u-turn and go chase a golf or something It's kind of ridiculous so there's definitely a lot of reactions that you can get with the GTR people trying to race you people revving at you getting thumbs up people snapping pictures um, sometimes people will just ask to sit in it uh, which is kind of fun <laughs> you know I'm not gonna lie it's part of the the you know ownership experience of having a car like this you know people are excited to see it it's not something that you that you see every day even in Southern California driving around like Orange County in LA where there are a lot of high-end cars you know to most people it's still a very rare sight okay so the last thing that I want to talk about is how people react to me as an owner and you know people might react to different people but this is just my personal experience so uh, some people I think have this idea that like if you own a car like a GTR you must be crazy rich you know I understand that it definitely is a very expensive item and uh, you know it takes a lot to be able to have something like this but you don't need to be some kind of millionaire or something I don't know it just seems like people kind of have this idea that you're either like driving a Corolla or you're like a millionaire or something and then you can afford like 10 different supercars and I don't know I don't think a lot of people think about you know the idea that you can be sort of a middle to high income person that just you know makes sacrifices saves uh, you know whatever like there's there's levels to everything, right? And just because you have a GTR doesn't mean that you can afford 10 GTRs. Uh, you know, everything comes at a cost. And I have a GTR, so there are some other things that I don't have. And, you know, that's just kind of the reality of things. The other thing that's kind of funny is like, sometimes when people uh, ask me, you know, what car I have, uh, they won't even believe me that like I own a GTR. Like one time I was at Cars and Coffee and uh, I was talking to this guy who had a really cool, like really clean stock uh, FD and he was like, oh, so what's your car? And we were standing next to my GTR and I was like, oh, it's this one. And he's like, no, no, seriously, what is it? And I'm like, it's this one. And he's like, no, come on. I was like, yeah. And he goes, I don't believe you. I literally had to pull up my key and prove to him that it was my car. And he's just like, oh, 
wow. Like, he had to inspect it to make sure it was real. He's like, oh, you just, like, look really young. Um, which, you know, I get that. Um, but it's just kind of funny. And, you know, I'm not going to lie. That was kind of, like, fun for me. And, again, it's just part of the experience of having a car like the GTR. Uh, but it's funny that people, like, won't, uh, won't believe me sometimes. So, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. And I'll catch you guys and your beautiful faces. Not really, because I don't see you. You'll catch my beautiful face in the next video. Please consider giving me a subscription if you enjoyed the video. And I'll catch you guys later.